In today's video, we're going to be doing some Hess law practice. This is quite a difficult topic, which is why I'm making a separate video just containing practice questions like this. You can watch an alternative video to actually look more at the methodology behind it. So question one, state the equation for the formation of ethane, C2H6, from its elements and then determine the value for the standard enthalpy of formation of ethane given the following standard enthalpies of combustion. And you have the value for carbon, hydrogen and ethane. So let's first of all do this bit of the question which is state the equation for the formation of ethane. So we're forming C2H6, which is a gas, and it needs to be produced from its elements, so that's quite straightforward. It's going to be carbon, which in its standard form is solid, plus hydrogen. Don't forget that it's diatomic, which means you need that too, and hydrogen is a gas. And then lastly, we need to balance the equation. So have a look, you need a 2 here, and we need 6 hydrogens on the left-hand side, which is why we're writing a 3 there. And then we need to determine the value for the standard enthalpy of formation given the following standard enthalpies of combustion. And don't forget, when you carry out complete combustion, you produce carbon dioxide and water, which is why we're going to write both of these compounds down here. Water in its standard state is liquid. Carbon dioxide is a gas. Now be careful, make sure that you have balanced your carbon dioxide and your water we can see here that we have two carbons, which is why we need to put a big two here. We have six hydrogens, which is why we need a big three here. And we're combusting all three substances, which is why I'm drawing three arrows. So we're showing the complete combustion involving carbon, complete combustion of hydrogen, complete combustion of ethane. And then we need to label each arrow with its combustion values. So when carbon is combusted, it's minus 394. Make sure you acknowledge that too, so we need to do two times that. We've been told that the enthalpy of combustion of hydrogen is minus 286. And we have a big three, so we need to do three times that. And then the combustion of ethane is minus 1560, and we don't need to touch that number. And then according to Hess's law, we can take any root at all in order to show the formation of ethane. So for me, that's going to mean coming down these two arrows and then going up this arrow. So just make sure you get all of your signs the right way around. So according to Hess's law, we need to do two lots of minus 394 plus three lots of minus 286. And the reason we keep the sign that way around is because we're following the arrow. However, when we get to the ethane, can you see we're going to the opposite way that the arrow is pointing, which is why we need to add 1560, because we need to swap that minus sign around. So when you pop that into your calculator, you get a value which is minus 86 kJ per mole. And if we're going to write that properly, that shows the enthalpy of formation of ethane. And that is your final answer. Question 2. The values for the enthalpies of combustion of carbon, graphite and hydrogen can be used to determine the enthalpy of formation of any hydrocarbon, provided the enthalpy of combustion of the hydrocarbon in question is known. A. The enthalpy of combustion of butane, C4H10, is minus 2,877 kJ per mole. Determine the enthalpy of formation of butane. B. The enthalpy of combustion of octane, C8H18, is minus 5,470 kJ per mole. Determine the enthalpy of formation of octane. So let's deal with the enthalpy of combustion of butane question first of all, so part A. And let's start by providing the formation equation for butane. So producing C4H10, which is a gas, and it's being produced by the elements carbon, which is a solid at room temperature, and hydrogen, which is a gas at room temperature. Just make sure it's balanced. And that's our formation equation done. Then it says in the question that the enthalpy of combustion of butane is minus 2,877. So the enthalpy of combustion is all about burning that butane to produce carbon dioxide and water, which we're going to show here, together with their state symbols. 
and we know that that value for the enthalpy of combustion of butane is minus 2877. Let's balance that equation. And then according to the question that we just did, this worksheet's all linked, we know that the enthalpies of combustion of carbon is minus 394 and for hydrogen is minus 286. So we're just going to carry those values down to here. So for carbon, it's minus 394. For hydrogen, it's minus 286. And then double check those big numbers. We need to multiply the carbon number by 4 and the hydrogen number by 5. And then we just need to use Hess's law. We need to follow that cycle round to show the formation of butane. So we're going down these two arrows, so following the direction of the arrow, which is why we keep these signs negative, and then we're going against the arrowhead, going to butane, which is why this sign needs to flip and become positive. So it's very similar to the question we just did. So for butane, we need to do 4 times minus 394 plus 5 times minus 286 plus 2877. And we get a value which is minus 129 kJ per mole. Let's finish it off nicely by writing that the enthalpy of formation of butane is minus 129 kJ per mole. Part B, this time we're looking at the enthalpy of combustion of octane and we need to determine the enthalpy of formation of octane. Very similar procedure. Start by writing the equation for the formation of octane, so that's C8. H18, we know it's being produced from its elements, that's carbon and hydrogen. We're going to balance the equation now. So that's done. We've been told in the question that its combustion of octane is minus 5470. So draw an arrow coming down here, showing that it produces carbon dioxide and water. Make sure that it's balanced. And then we're copying those values down again for the combustion of carbon, which we know is minus 394. According to this big eight, we need to multiply by eight. Hydrogen was minus 286, which we need to multiply by nine. And we're basically ready to get going now. So using our highlighter, in order to show the formation of butane, we're gonna combust carbon, we're going to combust hydrogen, the arrowheads are in the correct direction, so we don't need to alter the sign. We're going against this arrowhead up here, so we're going to have to add 5,470. So let's write it out. It becomes 8 times minus 394 plus 9 times minus 286 plus 5,470. Work that out, and you get minus 256 kJ per mole. Again, let's write it out nicely. So the enthalpy of formation of octane is minus 256 kJ per mole. Question 3. The thermite reaction, C right, involves the reaction of aluminium with iron oxide to form aluminium oxide according to this equation. It is an extremely exothermic reaction and the heat produced can be used to weld railway lines together. The enthalpies of formation of aluminium oxide and iron 3 oxide are minus 1,676 and minus 825.5 kJ per mole respectively. Determine the heat produced when 20 grams of aluminium react completely with excess iron 3 oxide. So this question is different to the ones we've just been looking at. It's nothing to do with combustion. So let's begin, first of all, by writing out the equation that they've given us. And we've been told here that the enthalpies of formation of aluminium oxide is minus 1,676. So let's just so show that here. So we're showing aluminium oxide being formed from its constituent elements. So that's aluminium plus oxygen. And we know that the enthalpy of formation of iron oxide is minus 825.5. So let's add iron here, and we know that that is minus 825.5. We need to make sure that it's balanced, so we need two ions, two aluminiums, and one and a half oxygens. So it's important that we get Hess cycle completely sorted, but then when it's done, it's actually quite straightforward. 
So let's have a look at the question again. Determine the heat produced when 20 grams of aluminium react completely with excess iron oxide. So let's first of all work out the heat produced when we have exactly one mole of aluminium. So follow the cycle. We're going against that arrow, which is why we're going to have to add 225.5. But then we're following the arrowhead this way, which means we minus 1,676, which gives us minus 850.5 kj per mole and this is going to be the enthalpy change for this reaction and that's for one mole however it's quite complicated because we know we've got 20 grams of aluminium so now let's work out the number of moles of aluminium by doing the mass given in the question divided by the MR so the MR of aluminium is 27 to get 0 0.740 moles of aluminium. Remember I was using this formula triangle here which states that number of moles is mass divided by MR. So that's how I just worked out the number of moles of aluminium. Just check the mole connection up here and you can see that you have two moles of aluminium forming only one mole of aluminium oxide which is why we need to divide that number of moles by two to get 0 0.370 moles and then lastly, this is a hard question, the heat evolved, so we're finally answering the question, by 20 grams of aluminium. And then the final part of our calculation, we just need to multiply that enthalpy by the number of moles to get 315 kJ. So that's the amount of heat evolved.